and welcome to another tea break chat. It's lockdown, it's time for a tea break. It's the third lockdown, one, two, three, and it's tier five. So have a tea break and have a chat. Today I'm speaking with two people from the arts sector, which has been particularly hit by the pandemic. Dan Brooks is the auditorium manager at the Princess Alexandra Auditorium in Yarm. Annabel Turpin is the chief executive of ARC Stockton and chair of the Cultural Industries and Visitor Economy Task Force, which is part of Tees Valley LEP. Most venues have been closed since March last year due to the lockdown and social distancing rules and more than 55,000 jobs were lost in the industry between March and December 2020. Around 70% of workers in the sector have also been furloughed. So it's not a happy situation for the industry. Dan, firstly, let's talk to you. Obviously, you are not able to open. How has it been? Can you remember when you last had an audience? Yes, yeah, it, it, it seems like an age ago now. We, Our last audience was the 14th of March 2020. Um, we had Kojo Anim, the comedian, in, um, and obviously it was kind of a week and a bit before lockdown came in, and we were aware of kind of an idea of what was coming, but obviously nothing was in place at that point. So we had, I think we had an audience of about 200 in, so it wasn't a big audience for us. We, we take kind of 750, 800 as a max. So we had, we implemented some queuing systems for toilets. And we had some hand sanitising stations on the way in, but that, that, that was it at that point. And we kind of thought at that point, oh, you know, we're going above and beyond, you know, what would normally be the case. But then, of course, lockdown hit and now masks and sanitising are just kind of a, a normal way of life, aren't they? Yes. And and of course, a normal way of life in your sector and of course at the ARC is no audience. Uh, Annabelle, can you remember your first audience and, and that process that Dan was talking about? I can. Your last and, audience, and yes. We, we actually managed to have an audience in the September, October window. So... Uh, we reopened at the beginning of September with lots of COVID secure procedures in place, as you say, Dan, um, you know, masks, hand sanitizer, cleaning procedures, um, queuing, all of those things. And we were really pleased that customers told us how safe they felt. So we did have audiences for a couple of live events in October, but obviously then had to close again uh, at the beginning of November. OK, so let's talk about the future a little bit. Uh, Dan, first, you've established a relatively new venue in Tees Valley with a large, uh, a large uh, seating capacity. And you've had big names like Jimmy Carr and uh, Jason Donovan. Is the momentum gone out of booking future or, or are you able to uh, persuade agents and other uh, organisers that you're still around? I, I hope not is the is the honest answer. Um, we just got. I mean, I've been there nearly five years now, and I must admit the kind of I, I run on a school term booking system because we, we, we're based on the armed school site. Obviously, we're part of the school. So my September 19 through to kind of August 2020 program was by far my, my happiest program in terms of the balance we got of different events. A lot of charity events in there, some conferences. Uh, we have the Northeast Disability Conference booked in just a couple of weeks um, after the lockdown came in. So unfortunately, it, it got cancelled as well. So I was really happy with the programme. Of course, now having to reschedule everything means that rather than Annabelle, you know, will we'll, we'll know exactly where I'm coming from, rather than having to rather than being able to choose the exact slots you want and be really happy with the mix of events you've got in your programme, it becomes a little bit about the necessity of honouring contracts and fitting in with tours that are doing the whole of the UK and say, look, we can only come to you in May 2022. That's the only time. And you think, well, it kind of clashes a little bit with another event I've got two weeks before it, but, but, but I, I need to fit them in. So it doesn't become necessarily as well rounded as a program um and obviously you know I've, I've done my best as annabelle will have done you know to still add the variety in there so the answer is most of the programming we had we've still got um it's just moved a year yeah. two years down the line um and then it's a case on you know working on some of the the maybe smaller or some of the one-off events like some of the charity events i talk about which is such a big key aspect of what we do at the princess alexandra auditorium in yarn to be there for the community um, to be able to pull some of those conferences, those one-off charity events, those local dance schools back in, um, you know, uh, and yeah, I'm very hopeful that at the point we can reopen fully safely that, you know, we'll be able to pick up where we left off. 
Annabelle, what about you? I, I know you want to curate a great programme, but I suppose sometimes you'll feel more like an entertainment lawyer looking at the details of contracts. Yeah, it can definitely feel like that. And, you know, we share some of the challenges that Dan's mentioned in terms of scheduling. Um, I guess, you know, we have a pretty dynamic programme. We only have shows in generally for one night. So compared to theatres that are committed to sort of three or four week runs, it's much easier for us to be able to pick things up and, and reschedule them. So, yeah, we're, we're in the process of rescheduling some events for the third time. Our customers are being amazingly patient with us, uh, willing to transfer tickets over. Um, so, yeah, it's it's a big job, though, to keep on top even just of that rescheduling. And obviously, we're still looking to bring new names and, and new shows and things into our programme um, at the point that we can reopen. Annabelle, can I ask you more generally, because you've got this wider ranging remit uh, in uh, the Tees Valley LEP, about the cultural sector in Tees Valley? Because great steps were being taken to make people realise the cultural assets we have on our doorstep in the northeast of England. Do you think that some of the impetus that was building and the momentum that was building uh, can be regained when reopening eventually happens? Yes, I think it can. Um... I mean, I'm generally quite a positive person. I should probably just caveat that uh, uh, with that. But um, I think there's a momentum behind uh, culture and the kind of wider creative industries in the Tees Valley. And I think that will be maintained. When when the world reopens, uh, I think the lockdown has heightened people's awareness of their local area. So we're very hopeful that people will want to support local assets and, and cultural facilities. There's obviously a desire for people to reconnect with each other and have those moments of kind of sharing with other people that we've we've all been denied for so long. So I think that's right. I, I'm look I'm looking forward to reopening and going and spending some money in local independent shops. I'm sick of being in the big supermarkets. <laughs> maybe people yeah. feel the same way about being sick of on Netflix and maybe get their entertainment in other ways. We hope so. We definitely hope so. And you know, as I say, our experience of reopening for those two months in September October is that people were really willing to come back and were telling us how important it was, you know, perhaps they hadn't realised before, but when something's taken away from you, you suddenly realise what impact it makes on your life. At my office, we're using these rapid flow tests for our essential staff. When essential staff come in, they have to prove they're COVID negative. The government has said this might have an impact on uh, the kind of work you're in, in live events. Dan, Annabelle, what do you think of rapid flow testing and is it something we should be looking at carefully? I mean, we're, we're using them at the school at the moment. Um, all all staff that are in are offered to rapid flow tests every week to be able to, you know, make sure that they're not they're not inadvertently carrying COVID nineteen. Um, in terms of you know having been involved with that process, having helped administer the tests, and also having uh, taken the test myself, the the concept of rolling that out across an audience of seven hundred and fifty people prior to an event and then being able to house those people in a covid secure way so that then so that they're socially distanced there's no chance of infecting each other um it seems like quite a challenge so, and i mean we're we're a venue we're lucky we've mm. got lots of additional ancillary spaces with being on the school site um and it's something um you know it's something i think would be very difficult uh, to it's it is a challenge. Annabelle, what do you think? They talk, the government's talking about sending them out in the post to members of the public, so you get one at home, and maybe you show them yeah. the date it was done. I don't know how it will work. It, can it be made to work? Um, again, I, I hope so, and I think what we have to recognise is that the kind of the technology around testing is, is changing all the time. Um, so we, we hope that our scientists are working hard to come up with things to make it easier for us. You know, we've been accessing the, the local community hub to have some staff tested, um, to support kind of events we've been live streaming from ARC. I think, as you say, Dan, in terms of, um, you know, extra um, protection for staff and other people working in the venue, they can work really well. But, you know, maybe we'll get to the stage where everyone does their own rapid flow test every morning and, you know, uh, we all walk around knowing that we've all been tested. Mm. So I think there's a way to go in terms of how it's implemented, but it does feel that they could be part of the solution. Look, it's been great talking to you both. Unfortunately, tea break's over. Thanks for sparing us the time.